Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Nigel Bajos, and today we're gonna to be talking about mobile filmmaking, and more specifically, shooting videos on older or cheaper smartphones. So I've always thought that it's really cool that we have these highly capable cameras right in our pockets. I mean, given the right app, you can shoot in pretty high bit rates, you can shoot in flat log profiles, pretty high resolutions and frame rates. But there are definitely a lot of downfalls to shooting with your smartphone. So in this video, I wanna show you how I get past those downfalls and make footage, even from a older iPhone 6S, look pretty decent and definitely usable on YouTube. So the first thing I think we should talk about is the apps. Now, if you're gonna spend money anywhere, I would definitely say spend money on a good app. I've tried a lot of the free apps and I haven't really been that impressed, but there are three apps that I use that I really like and can definitely recommend. Two of them are pretty similar and it just kind of depends on what you're shooting and how often you shoot. But the third one is very specific for gimbals. So the first one is the Moment Pro Camera app. Now again, it's not free, but I think for the money, it gives you a lot of really good controls and they even give you some flat profiles as well and you can shoot in you know pretty high bit rates. So it gives you a lot of controls and I would say this one is perfect for anyone who just kind of casually shoots on their smartphone and just wants to get a little bit of B-roll or something like that to add into their main footage with their like you know proper camera but it does give you all the controls that you would need to shoot good quality video on your phone. Now the other app is Filmic Pro, which you've probably heard of by now if you're into mobile filmmaking at all. And this one is definitely one that I would suggest if your phone is your primary camera. It gives you a lot of options, more so than the Moment Camera app does. And it also has another app that they sell as well called the Filmic Remote. And with that one, you can use other smart devices to use as a monitor. And you can actually control the camera that you're shooting with through that monitored signal. So that's really cool. And I would say that if you're gonna be filming YouTube videos on your phone, that's definitely something to invest in because you can actually see what you're doing on a different device and actually set your exposure and your focus and all that kind of stuff. So those are the two main apps that I use for mobile filmmaking. The third one is called ProCam. Now, if you've ever shot video on your smartphone, you know that Whenever you start moving your smartphone, you get those micro jitters, you get that weird warping effect when you're walking, and that's because of the internal stabilization in your smartphone. And the way that you can bypass that is using an app called ProCam, which shoots in a different kind of video format. It does have some glitches here and there, but it's the 4K Max option with the ProCam app that allows you to bypass the internal stabilization of your camera. And so I use the ProCam app whenever I have the camera on a gimbal. Now, I don't like to move my phone when I'm filming that much, but when I do, if I put it on a gimbal, I shoot in the ProCam app just so I can bypass the horrible micro jitters and weird exposure issues that iPhones are notorious for. We're gonna talk about microphones. Most of us probably already have an on-camera microphone that you could easily use with your smartphone. All you really need is a TRRS cable to connect from your microphone into your phone. Then you can use the microphone that you already have. You don't really have to go out and buy anything new. But if you wanted to get into the wireless game, Comica does have some you know, pretty good offerings that are not really that expensive. They have a WS50, I believe, is their one that they made specifically for smartphones. And then they just recently released their Boom XD system. There is an actual bundle that's specifically designed for your iPhone. And I'm actually using the Boom XD system to record myself right now. So that can give you a little bit of an idea of the sound quality you can expect from a wireless microphone like this. But if you're just gonna do voiceovers or something like that, honestly, you can just download the Rode Reporter app and just record your voiceovers straight into your phone like that, and then just export the audio file. It all does depend on what kind of videos you're trying to make, but that is also an option. So last but not least, let's talk about some of the rigs that I use. Now for just handheld stuff, I use this Movo smartphone rig, which is kind of like 
a cheap knockoff of the shoulder pods, but this one's only like 20 bucks and it works just fine. There's a quarter 20 tap on the bottom if you wanna put a tripod plate there and use it with your tripod. But yeah, it has a cold shoe mount on the top for mounting a mic and it holds your phone very securely. As far as gimbals, I use the Feutech Vlog Pocket, which I did a little review of that gimbal right there, but that one's actually really nice and it's well under 100 bucks by now and it does perfectly well in combination with that ProCam app. I've been able to get some really nice smooth moves with that combination of app and gimbal. And honestly, I don't like to move my smartphone a lot when I'm filming with it because as soon as you start moving it, it's like really easy to tell that you're filming on a smartphone. So I try to like, you know, keep it stationary or keep it on a tripod as much as I can. But when I do move it, I use the Feotech Vlog Pocket. Now, the last thing I'm gonna talk about is a way to put a filter in front of your smartphone, which I think is one of the most important things. Even if you don't buy anything else, even if you're just using a free app, this one piece of gear I think is the most crucial for filming on your smartphone. So I'm gonna show you what I use first and then I'll give you a cheaper option if you don't wanna go out and spend it, but I definitely recommend the option that I have. And I actually have a moment case for my iPhone 6S. And just in case you're wondering, I am still filming on another iPhone 6S. But yeah, I have this moment case on here and what that allows me to do is to not only put lenses, but I like to put the filter mount on my phone. And the filter mount that I bought was another like 20 bucks. So the case was 20 bucks, the filter mount was 20 bucks, and then I have this $15 variable ND filter. What that allows me to do is to control my exposure when I'm outside because that's the biggest thing with smartphones is that there's only two ways to control exposure, your ISO and your shutter speed. So what a lot of people end up doing is they're just cranking up their shutter speed whenever they're outside because that's the only way that they can control their exposure. But that's not the right way to do it because if you crank your shutter speed up, you're not gonna have the right motion blur. Right now I'm shooting at 24 frames per second and my shutter speed is 1 48th of a second. So I have proper motion blur. But if you don't have a variable ND filter in front of your phone lens, you're not gonna be able to do that. So that's the way that I do it. But if you wanna save some money, you can get this really cheap clip-on variable ND filter, which I found on Amazon. And it'll work on basically any phone that has the lens pretty close to the edge. So it's not really gonna work that well if you have a phone with like the lenses in the middle, but if you have an iPhone, it'll work just fine. So anyways, those are my tips on how to shoot better video on your smartphone, regardless of how old it is. I hope that that was helpful, if not entertaining for you. If it was, it'd be really cool if you hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more content. Thank you so much for watching. There's videos and playlists right here that you can check out if you want to. Again, thanks for stopping by and I will see you next time. Later.